This is Greg, a.k.a. Crazy G, from Crazy G in the G Spot and NECR, New England Concert Reviews. And I am here today with none other than the bass player, Dan Maines, for the band Clutch. Hello, welcome, and thanks for taking your time out to speak with us here at NECR. How are you? I'm, I'm good. Thanks for having me. Before we get into a few particular things, I'd like to touch upon Psychic Warfare for a moment or two. I've seen this CD already. Some saying as this could be the band's best album to date. Would you categorize it as such? And what would you say makes this CD different than any other release from Clutch? Uh, well, I think probably it was the album that we spent the most amount of time on each song. Um, you know, it's kind of, it was it's not our habit necessarily to go into a, the studio with all of the songs you know well rehearsed and and uh, fully fleshed out and that was one of the main differences for psychic warfare so we spent a lot of time writing and fine-tuning the songs and rehearsing them before we even went into the studio that's probably the biggest difference i would say uh, between that album and uh, most of our previous albums you know we, we prior to this we tended to go into the studio with uh, you know at least five or six songs but then it's just kind of a bag full of ideas and we would spend time in the studio sorting those ideas out whereas on this time around we, we really made an effort to go into the studio with nine or ten fully fleshed out songs we actually spent a lot of time on the road playing the songs out live before going into the studio and that helped a lot too i have to say this cd doesn't have one bad track on it thank you to me it really is a flawless cd what is your favorite track off this cd and why hmm. um that's a tough one i think there's a couple of standout tracks for me it'd be tough for me to just put it down to one but um our lady of electric light is a standout track for me just because it's sort of new material and new ideas for us and um you know, in the past, we have kind of played around with uh, acoustic tracks, um, not fully acoustic. Like I would still play an electric bass, but both Tim, our uh, lead guitarist, and Neil, our singer, would play acoustic guitars. And we actually did a full album in, with that kind of a setup. And I think that kind of led towards the eventual evolution to writing a song like Our Lady of Electric Light. It started off very much acoustic, but we kind of slowly added electric guitars when we felt it really pushed it in a, a better direction. And I think that song is kind of a, a nice blend between those two ideas. It definitely is. Like I said, I really don't see a bad track on this. I, I particularly care for uh, the track A Quick Death in Texas. It is a super funky tune, and I have to ask, what was the process like creating that song? Well, funny enough, that is actually the only song on the record that we didn't have fully written prior to going into the studio. Uh, we had a couple of those riffs, and I think we kind of pieced it together in the studio. We came up with the middle section in the studio, and that was fun. You know, I think we allowed ourselves time to just focus on that one song as being the song that we would actually compose in the studio and um, we uh, you know we had a lot of fun working with our producer machine and uh, kind of building different ideas and seeing what worked and what didn't and uh, yeah i think that 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 song is it kind of touches on our go-go influence which uh, we're from the washington dc area and uh, growing up uh, in the 80s early 90s the go-go scene here in dc was really big that's always been one of our influences, especially for drummer John Paul. It was cool to, to be able to throw that in there uh, and really kind of lay that flavor down in the middle section, which helps add to the funk. It is. It's so super funky. It, it really is cool. I can't get enough of that tune, but... Uh... <laughs> On April 16th, the band released a 12-inch vinyl for Record Store Day. It is a standalone piece containing two previously unreleased tracks from the Psychic Warfare Sessions, Mad Sidewinder and Outland Special Clearance. What can you tell us regarding those two tracks? Well, Mad Sidewinder is actually the very first song that we uh, wrote 
for this new album. And I think in a lot of ways that might have been its downfall. Um, being the oldest song and being a song that, that we were playing quite a bit live, um, I think, uh, unfortunately for that track, we just sort of grew tired of it for no <laughs> good reason. Uh, it just happened to be the oldest one. Uh, and I'm glad that we found an outlet for that song. I really do like that one a lot. And uh, Special Clarence is another one. That was another early, early song. Uh, I think that was probably the one song that we may have struggled with the most as far as writing and feeling like it was done uh i think we you know there was always an element of second guessing on that one and uh, once again i don't really know why <laughs> I, I love both of those tracks yeah they're killer tracks i mean everything you guys do is killer man it is not i don't think you guys done since i've been following you and getting into you i don't think i can say you guys have one bad song throughout your whole collection i, re I really can i get into everything that's good to hear it's difficult for us to play you know everyone's favorite song you know after you come up with 11 albums worth of material and you only have an hour and a half to play uh you know it's tough to narrow that song list down to something that you feel is going to make you know everybody happy that, that's a good problem to have i guess yeah <laughs> clutch has already been busy the first half of 2016 with playing as the special guest to Lamb of God. What was it like to play with Lamb of God in any memorable moments you could share? Uh, you also played Bonnaroo for the third time. Can you say anything briefly about that show? Sure, sure. Well, going on the tour with Lamb of God was uh, something that we had talked about uh, for a while because we had uh, done one previous tour with them. I can't even remember how many years ago. It might have been close to 10 years now. The uh, Sounds of the Underground tour. And uh, that was really my first exposure to them, uh, even though they were somewhat close to us uh, being from Richmond, Virginia. But uh, we spent a summer on that tour with them and uh, we had some good times and I was glad to be able to do that again with them. And uh, you know, we had some uh, some great shows. We actually uh, convinced Randy to come up on stage with us a couple of times. And we pulled out a song that we haven't played in well over 10 years, something off of a 7-inch that we put out back in 1992. Uh, so that was that was uh, that was a good experience, and it was it was fun to um, watch him and Neil interplay with each other on stage. Bonnaroo uh, is always a great time. We luckily finished our set right as this electrical storm was coming in, and they actually had to shut the festival down for an hour. And they had to clear the, the whole field. They told everybody to go back to their tents or their cars or whatever. Nothing basically happened. It might have rained for about ten minutes, but the storm passed over. And uh, everybody was able to come back in time for uh, Lamb of God set after us. But yeah, great time. And that's one of the best uh, examples of what makes a festival so good for a band like us to play is you have a real diverse selection of bands, you know, all different types of, of music. And you get those people together, uh, you know, it allows them to wander around and, and get exposed to something like Clutch, which they may not necessarily have ever heard before. Right. I know festivals are kind of taking a downfall lately, and I don't think there's going to be many coming around here in the Northeast during this this summer anyways. There may be a couple, but, you know, they're always a great, they're always a great show because you get a little bit of everything. Yep. Clutch has a couple very interesting shows coming up for the fall tour with Zach Sabbath and King. The first is at the Rock Carnival in Lakewood, New Jersey on September 30th. Why does this show stand out? more in the mind for the band than any other show on the tour. I think it's a it's a cool idea of you know bringing in different elements. Not it's not just music based. You know they're going to have a slew of food trucks there, and they have a lot of um, carnival style rides as well. So it's kind of like a combination of a fair and uh, a music festival, which is a really cool environment. And we we've done that show uh, in the past, and we're really looking forward to coming back. The second show is of course in my neck of the woods and. Worcester Mass on October 30th at the Palladium. What can you tell us about this show and what can we expect from you guys? Well, 
Worcester's always been a good town for us, so we're definitely excited to be coming back. And um, we, uh, yeah, we have, like you said, we have King opening up the show. They have a new album coming out in the fall, I believe. But um, they're another favorite of ours. We've done a couple of tours with them in the past. Zach Sabbath, which we haven't toured with. We did a tour with Black Label Society, and that went over really well. And uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to uh, to watching Zach do his take on Sabbath songs. But uh, yeah, we'll definitely be playing at least five or six tracks off of Psychic Warfare. And uh, we're going to be making a real strong effort to bring out as many of the older songs as we can, too. We really try our best to uh, make sure that the old fans still get their taste of what got them interested in the band in the first place. Right on, And uh, I think, uh, you know, we'll just come out and do our thing. No frills, just uh, concentrate on, on what we do best. Well, I should be in the pit shooting you guys. Hopefully, uh, everything will go great and you guys rock it like you normally do. I've already seen you a couple times times and i gotta tell you, you guys one hell of a show I, what else can you tell us about this upcoming fall tour with clutch we may not know about well really not too much i mean uh we haven't uh hit that area in a while especially uh playing our new material so uh you know if you haven't had a chance to see us since the psychic warfare album came out it'll be a good opportunity for you to hear those new songs you know i was reading up on you guys clutch has been together since its formation in 1991 and still has the original unit intact. In today's industry, it is uniquely hard for a band to stay together. What would you say are some of the reasons Clutch has stuck together for 25 years? That's a long time, man. I, I gotta give you guys credit. <laughs> I really no. Hey, listen. You have your days. You yeah. know, everybody can rub each other the wrong way after a while. It all happens. Sometimes you need to take breaks. But twenty five years. That's you know. That's a marriage, man. <laughs> exactly. There's no better way of putting it than that. And uh, you know, I, I think that one of the key things is that when we got together and first started playing uh, as a band, you know, we had uh, relatively uh, small goals. You know, we just wanted to uh, maybe go into the studio and record some songs to make a seven inch and uh, get some shows. And, uh, you know, fortunately for us, I think, you know, we started at a time uh, when the music business was full boom. You know, you had your major labels uh, sweeping up all kinds of bands, hoping for the next Nirvana or Soundgarden type of, you know, mega hit. And, uh, you know, I think that luckily we were able to, I mean, we, we signed to Atlantic Records, or East West Records, I should say, uh, in 93. The band started in 91. So that was a very quick turnaround for us. And, you know, we were very green. I uh, didn't really know what the hell we were doing. And uh, we were just having fun. And, you know, we've been together doing this long enough now to where we can successfully kind of avoid the trappings of, you know, having the belief that to be a success you have to be on a major label because those kinds of uh, deals uh, really don't exist the same way that they did back then. Luckily enough, we you know we went through that cycle and we had some ups and downs with it. And there were plenty of labels who signed us, lost interest to drop us, and we were able to move on from that. And we just didn't let that really bring us down because that wasn't really one of our goals. We just really focused on writing songs that we enjoy listening to and playing as many shows as we can. And uh, you know, we have a great fan base and that really keeps us going and uh, I do uh, my heart goes out to bands trying to get together today you know trying to get something started in this climate that we have right now and it's it's a much different world and it's I would imagine much more difficult to get your wheels moving and uh, you know we, we are very aware of that and very uh, grateful for what we have you know we just focus on what we know we do well and that is getting up on stage and uh, playing to an audience. So the more opportunities we have to do that, you know, we, we take them and, uh, it's always a good time for us. That's amazing that you guys have done that. And that's one thing. It's funny. You, you kind of mentioned something about it and what you just said. You know what I see more of today? I see bands changing talented musicians constantly almost, it seems like. I can't understand how some can just go in and come out. It's got to be difficult. Writing an album must be difficult on its own. Never mind trying to P 
people who are coming in up to speed? Well, you know, probably the one thing that does make it easier for us is we knew each other uh, before the band, um, and uh, that probably goes a long way. Right. Uh, I imagine it would. One more quick question, and then I'll let you go. Other than this tour coming up, is there anything else beyond for Clutch you can tell us about? Uh, not too, not really. I mean, we have our, our plates full with uh, this U.S. tour. We're going uh, to Europe in a few weeks, and we're going to be doing some festivals and uh, clubs shows over there so you know, we're really busy on the road and uh, whatever time we have set aside we're going to be spending in our studio space at home just coming up with new ideas and writing new songs trying to get the ball rolling for the next one it's awesome to hear that you yeah. <laughs> know i always no, because you know what you bring something different to the table with every song and it's mm -hmm. that's a hard thing to do well thank you it's just a very it, hard it, thing it, to it do can be a challenge. And you guys do it very well. So, listen, uh, again, I, I want to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, Dan Maines, bass player for the band Clutch. I wish you the best in the future of the band. I wish you the best on this upcoming tour. And uh, hopefully I'll see you on the Worcester Day. Absolutely. See you out there. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. And that was Dan Maines, bass player for the band Clutch. This is Greg, a.k.a. Crazy G. Any CR. I'm out of here. Later.